Um, I have here an article from mentalfloss.com, and it's about uh, some Furby myths that people actually believe. I thought that's a, that's a fun article. So um, I'm going to read through. I would like to point out that these articles, these rumors, these rumors and myths, they aren't true. They're, they're, they, they, the Furbies can't actually do these things. But the fact that people thought they could is a testament to their scare factor. So, okay, here's one. Parents thought Furbies were teaching their children swear words. Like, somehow they just about, like, slowly, secretly teach their kids to swear. Yeah. Like, under their nose. People thought Furbies could launch a space shuttle. Through some kind of, um, they they start triangulating it, like triangulating the coordinates or something. Sure. For the Russians. Uh, the NSA and the Pentagon thought Furbies were national security <laughs> threats. To That's America. That's true. <laughs> well, they are now, but they didn't used to be, Jared. And people thought that Furbies were made of real cat and dog fur. <laughs> so, Kyle, whose side are you on? I'm on our side. Who okay. do you think I am on? But it's like they these, sound more like conspiracy theories. Well, I, like I said, they are conspiracy theories. They're not true. But the the fact that people thought these were true is not good. Excuse us for a second, folks. We are. I mean, that's just videos. your typical normal paranoia, though. That, that comes is with any, That comes with anything that you know can. I guess is sort of unusual because you don't it, because you know Furbies you know they talk and they move and especially one of the biggest things is that is the fact that sometimes they may just randomly speak out be, and you are not sure what caused that they're an advanced so, in technology they are advanced technology I will give them that they're they're a very interesting piece of technology however they're literally Alexas with creepy monster bodies they are ABC News reported the original Furby was more than an animatronic toy it was the first toy that appeared to have a brain. That's horrifying. <laughs> it's but like it's Ultron, but yet it's cute and cuddly. But it's an advancement in technology. Oh would we be where we are today without Furbies? Probably. Yeah, I think we would still be where we are today, just without Furbies. Maybe. If you can so somehow at the Furby same time, eventually could... something has to test bed. The and like the the live animatronic stuff toy aside from just tickle me Elmo, and some people oh are terrified of those as well. I am terrible. So, oh my god! Sometimes you need a you you need an animatronic friend who doesn't scream for you to tickle them. Actually, do Furbies? I think Furbies do actually ask for tickles. Oh, like, honestly, what right. would what would happen if say we put like a proper actual you know Alexa into say more of a like human animatronic body? Would people be more terrified of that just because you now got this animatronic in your house that speaks, even though if she acts just basically like a normal Alexa would? What, I'm sorry, what are you saying? What, what's your argument here? Well, the fact that, you know, most people are terrified of like, you know, Furbies and, and tickle me animals and stuff like that because of their, you know, movement factor and the, un, I guess, the supposed unknowns, even though that's just basic paranoia from the, un, from the uncultured plebeians. But plebeians, <laughs> nice word. Okay, now our side is taking off the public. <laughs> uh, allow, allow me to interject another point about that scare factor. Um, have any of you heard of Tattletale? I feel like I have, but I'm reminded. So of it was a horror game that came out, I think, just a few years ago, and it's built on the idea that these Furbies, like that creep factor, that they're like these AI, and they have like yeah, this. Yeah, I I remember watching like playthroughs of that. They have like and it's like they're hunting down this kid was and like killing game? his parents. It was, yes, a video, it, it was like a computer game. Yeah. And now let me tell you this. Scare Factor. Here's the thing. Scare Factor. Like I love horror movies. I love scary movies. Yeah. I love all that. But when scary movie, when scary themes and stuff can be started to geared towards children. kids' children's toys, that gets a little risky. Now you could argue Chucky, but Chucky was never a kid's toy. Chucky has yeah, always just been a scary movie. Yeah. Chucky was a character. Yeah, and people have made stupid like Slendy Tubbies or whatever. You know, where it's like Slender, but it's Teletubbies. But like that one is pretty clearly known to be scary. Yeah, and. I feel like Furbies, they're just scary enough to where yeah. you don't need very much to advertise that this is a scary thing. They I feel like because of that, they hit this kind of weird psychological sweet spot. Because it's this thing where it's like, it exists where it's, it's no, not marketed it's in a threatening way, but right. the fact that it has such odd eccentricities probably kind of grips the, I mean, it's gripped the public's imagination in a big way. 
And I think there's something to be said about, especially in a toy market where everything is trying to be either like cute or like, oh, we're being cool and edgy, you know? To have something that has the courage to just be a talking bird who slowly learns English. I still There's don't think it's a bird. It's doing something, it's, do, it's stepping outside of those cultural binaries and norms and is stretching into new emotional territory for, uh, for toys to encompass. Now Seth, let me tell you this. Just because something is courageous doesn't mean that it's good. But it's lit. Courageous is a good quality. <laughs> it's, it's cur- lit. Courage is a good is a good and admirable quality. But you, I can name many, there are many people in history who have been courageous, but they're not exactly good. But what are we stepping outside of? A world of Barbie dolls and GI Joes into a world where you are taking home with you. I don't want to make that device that keeps laughing in the middle of the night. I think I know many parents who would disagree with you strongly on that. I mean, it screams in the night. It begs for food. What else about would you this. want from an object in your house? You people want pets, don't they? <laughs> yeah, but my pet doesn't sit in the corner of my house staring into my soul going... <laughs> It's we have different weird. pets. <laughs> what pets do you have? Uh, He's an adorable little golden doodle with a psychotic side. <laughs> I mean, my cat stares into my soul, but at least he's adorable. My dog only stares into my soul when he's like, hey, feed me. That's what furbies do. That's all they do. Yeah, but he doesn't sit in the dark in the corner of my room with like Well, you put eyes. him in the dark where his glowing eyes will become more prominent. <laughs> <laughs> That's your fault. The new ones have glowing you eyes. Sh- you could just put... Okay, that is a bad decision. Ever <laughs> 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 put glowing eyes on something unless it's a robot. It is a sure. robot. Well, a ro- something that's meant yeah. to look like a robot, not meant to look like something else. They tried the not robotic eyes, and they're a lot scarier. Have you seen those suckers? <laughs> I'm not going to argue that Furbies aren't scary, but isn't it kind of cool that Furbies are scary? I love scary movies, but no, because they're geared towards children. Scary movies are not geared towards children. I, I guess would... I could find some common ground and say, okay, it's kind of cool that they're scary but it's still like i don't i don't i don't like it i'm 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 gonna i'm gonna fight jared a little bit here so so he's basically you're basically arguing here that scary things should not be geared towards children yes if you say Ouija boards, we're done here. I, oh gosh, I was not gonna go there. <laughs> no, I was gonna go back to Grimm's fairy tales, where from the beginning, we have, uh, and of course we have much more sanitized Disney fairy tales, you know, fairy tale versions of these. But even back to Pinocchio, that film took you on an adventure where there are children terrified and screaming as they turn into donkeys and being sold to slave mines. And so it's, that, a, it's a it's a classic. It's a great movie, and it teaches you something. And kids need to learn to cope with fear. If we fear bubble wrap them in like even Winnie the Pooh has like those creatures. What I don't Heffalumps know. Heffalumps and woozles. Heffalumps and woozles. Now I'm gonna get that song stuck in my head. Even Thanks Winnie a lot. the Pooh has heffalumps and woozles. <laughs> and okay. even you know a, a bright happy movie like Tangled has some creepy moments with Mother Gothel. And I think that is important to a child's emotional development in saying that they should be able to cope with fear a little bit better with just furbies furbies should be their way of trying to learn how to deal with fear their life should have something in it that's an unknown factor that they're gonna have to grapple with and try to understand what its place is I don't think that toys should be that. I think or they can stories be, are for Or they can be used to teach children. I wrote, listen. Okay. Stories, here's the thing. Stories are fictional. Mm-hmm. You learn how to grapple with things that are not real. You learn how to grapple with them in their own universes. Yeah. Furbies are in your universe. You better figure out how to learn and live with this it. This boogeyman is not haunting your imagination. This boogeyman is sitting in the corner of your room staring into your soul. When I, mean, when I watch a scary movie, I know that that monster's in there. When I saw it... I didn't think that Pennywise, although I felt like it. I knew Pennywise the Clown wasn't sitting in the corner of my room, and I learned how to grapple with that, right? You learn how to do that with stories and movies. You don't learn how to do that with toys that sit in the corner of your room, actually sitting in the corner of your room. How do I take care of that physical problem? I take it out back and, hit it and use it for target practice with my shotgun. <laughs> I don't know, man. 
This is when you just use the Furbies as an instructional to teach kids about not to have irrational fears. To or not a, to have, yeah. Yeah, to, to an animatronic that has very specific um, Maybe programming and cannot eat you alive in the middle of the night. Maybe you could use it for systematic desensitization. Dis desensitization. Exactly. I thought of another argument. Sorry, I had to throw in psychology in there just because that was a class I had. Oh, it's very welcome. <laughs> uh, unless anybody else has a point, because I feel like this one's going to take up a lot of time. All right, so shoot. Shoot. Furbies are training the parents of the next generation. No! I knew you were gonna, someone was going to say that. No. <laughs> For what? No. Because, you know, like, okay, okay. Have you guys ever seen David Lynch's film Eraserhead? No. I know that. Here's the thing, when we think of like, oh, you know, you're gonna have a baby one day, everybody thinks, oh, cute and cuddly little babies, you know, and everybody, ha and also, you know, we give that to kids, right, with like, with the way that the, you know, baby dolls are designed. The ones yeah, that's they what have baby this dolls are for. Giant born. oversized eyes and all that kind of thing. Furbies, they show you the dark side, the side you only see in David Lynch movies where the baby is some horrifying half-cow monster. Great film, I recommend watching it. Seth. But he was shocked when he when he had his child and he's like, there's a real element of bizarre horror here and nobody was expressing that. Eraserhead expresses that. Furbies express that. Seth, I do understand what you're saying, that parents, you can learn how to train that condition of parents with these Furbies, which act like children, but to be honest, they're just too terrifying that I think that that, that it can scar some children into not wanting have kids because then they're going to see, this is what this this is what parenting is like, it's this little monster staring at me in the it's corner of the night. They know it'll help over This is why you get them the eyebrow. <laughs> <laughs> what? Okay, but like, wow. for, the, for the purpose of learning how to parent, they do have dolls, like, like human looking dolls for that. You don't have, to, and like, that won't scare children into saying, this is what parenting is like. It's gonna be this little creepy thing staring at me yeah. in the middle of the night screaming at me. And look, babies, yeah, they're in the middle of the night screaming, but you're not gonna go to the crib and see this like little demon sitting in there. You're gonna see a baby, not this blue, furry thing. So you're suggesting more realistic baby dolls. Yes. You know, if I watch... I think that's a little bit worse. What? Fantasy helps us cope with things that we wouldn't directly understand. But why would you have to have something so terrifying as the Furby? Those things are horrifying. And children can... Children... That's a lot of pathos, man. Children... Yeah, I know I don't usually use pathos so much, but children can also... Like it, like we said, they can... Those things... The Furbies can be hacked. And then, like, they don't know... And then, like... God knows what they can hear. The hackers can hear from those children. I don't have any. I mean, that, 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 I mean, that goes with the Alexis too. So they can easily hack those as well. So Furby is Ultron. Um. Our yeah. Okay. So we are. We're almost done here with this debate. Any closing remarks? Let me just say it's very hard to be in a signed argument because I probably just pissed off the internet, which is not that hard to do. But <laughs> it's really, I would just like the internet to know that I was assigned this argument, although I kind of chose it. But you chose their side, but not the topic. If I got a little bit aggressive, I'm actually apologizing to the internet right now. You're I'm gonna get. I don't know. Anyway, you're a good man, Jerry. No, I'm not. <laughs> Oh. Dude, can I, can I, my closing argument? Okay, uh, or my closing statement. Uh, yeah, I guess if you're if you're scared of that Furby that's in the corner of your room staring into your soul, uh, you know, just overcome that boogeyman and uh, play. Uh, call back to last week. Play the KFC dating simulator game, uh, not sponsored, and uh, <laughs> get that chicken. Closing statements, Ira. Uh, you go ahead. All right. Um, I think we have found that while Furbies may cause some issues, considering hackers might use it to kidnap your children, it may also save the world from overpopulation. <laughs> if we distribute Furbies all throughout the Earth, we can save our planet.
higher up. I think that's okay. a slippery slope, but okay. This is a very slippery slope into Thanosism. All right, you have 10 seconds. Oh, Go. Yeah. I'll just say, your fear of Furbies is irrational. Get over it. They're just animatronics programmed a certain way. Good talk. See you next week. <laughs> Good talk. <laughs>